Do you think you're ready to retire? I've got four things you need to think about before you do. Hey guys, Jet here, Retirement Income Certified Professional, part of the advisory team here at W.A. Smith Financial Group. Listen, our mission is simple, providing financial peace of mind for you with your money and your investments. Today, I will be your guide. We're gonna talk about four things to do before you retire. And before we jump in, make sure you like this video and hit subscribe for more weekly educational content. So you think you're ready to retire. Well, let's jump into this because most people tend to think about this the wrong way right out of the gates. You think about, do I have enough money saved? Will I make it? Will I run out of money? If I make this decision and it's the wrong decision, will I really screw everything up? And those are all valid concerns because this is a scary decision, but I'm gonna teach you four steps to take to know if you're ready to talk to a financial planner, if you're ready to put that termination date in with your employer and make the leap, right? So let's jump in. Number one, I'm gonna have you start by thinking about retirement. And so we call it social. Think about the last 20, 30, 40 years of your life, especially if you've been with one employer and, and what that day-to-day, week-to-week has really looked like for you, right? You've gotten into a routine. You've relied on a paycheck that comes in that covers your lifestyle. A lot of times, most successful people, they don't have to think about anything other than I'm going to go to work. You know, if it's Monday through Friday, nine to five, and I'm going to make my, my income. I'm going to bring my paycheck home. And then we're going to have enough income to live our life and do all the things that we want to do. But I've seen time and time again, when people choose to retire or they don't think about what they're going to do with their time enough in retirement, the social aspect of their life can make them regret this decision very, very quickly. So here's what I would have you do. If you work 40 hours a week, say Monday through Friday, nine to five, you've just achieved 40 extra hours in your new lifestyle. What are you gonna do with that time? We call it every day is Saturday. I work Monday through Friday. I don't work on the weekends. I certainly try not to. And so Saturdays are really fun for me. You know, I can spend it with my kids, with my family. Well, now you don't work every day is Saturday to you. What are you gonna do with that time? What are your hobbies? Are you gonna golf? Are you gonna boat? Are you gonna travel? What might those things cost? How often are you gonna do it? You have to totally rethink the structure of your day-to-day, your week-to-week, your month-to-month lifestyle here. If you don't spend enough time on this first step here, you could really regret it when you get into retirement. And I've met plenty of people who have retired and then I'll meet with them six months later or a year later or two, two years later. I'll say, hey, how's it going? You happy? Was it a good decision? And you'd be surprised at how many people him haw around that answer. I can sense it in their voice. I can sense it in their demeanor that they're not overly happy. And a lot of times it's because they haven't thought enough prior to making a decision about what they're gonna do and how they're gonna spend their time. You also might lose the social aspect of your life. Listen, we gain friends at work, colleagues, people that we've known and we see every day for 10, 20, 30, 40 years sometimes, and all of a sudden you're not going into the office or into your employer anymore and you're not seeing those people, you could feel a little lost. So I think one of the most important steps that you have to follow when you when you jump down this, this path here is Are you ready emotionally? Are you ready physically? And have you thought enough about what you're going to do with all that newfound time? Listen, you've worked and you've saved money so that you can do this. We all wanna retire someday, but you don't wanna look back on the decision and and, and regret not thinking a little bit about how you're going to spend your time and what you're gonna do. You wanna spend confidently, you wanna enjoy these years. So start here. Think long and hard before you ever consider retirement about what that new lifestyle is going to look for you. Now, getting into number two, if you've thought about that and you know, hey, I'm mentally ready, I'm emotionally there, I can't stand another day at the office, I don't wanna go in anymore, every day is Saturday sounds like a fantastic idea to you, then you skip to number two and you wanna think about budget. Now. The word budget, not fun, right? Nobody wants to live on a budget. We all hate budgets, but that's not really what I mean by this. What I want you to think about is all that time you just spent thinking about what you want to do with your time, 
a lot of the things that you're likely thinking about might cost you money to do. So you had a budget and you may not have lived by it while you were working. You always had enough income coming in to cover what you wanted to do. But now you have to think about how will that change? You know, for me, I like to golf. If I were to retire, I think that I would like to play golf a little bit more than I do now. But I know that there would be additional cost and expense with doing that. So figure out how much you're going to spend, what you need to live happy, comfortably. Here's where I see people make mistakes. They'll think about their basic expenses of living. You know, I'll ask someone, hey, how much do you need to retire and live on? And they'll go, oh, well, you know, I need, you know, 200 bucks a month for the electric bill and hundred dollars for the gas bill. And I got my phone bill and my cable bill, you know, they'll, they'll do the finger addition and they'll say, well, it's about $5,000 a month. And ultimately when we dive deep into it, we figure out that that's just their basic level of expenses. They haven't considered the joy or the discretionary side of their expenses. So you can cut it into two categories if you want to. First could be basic expenses. These are things that you have to pay for. They're always going to be there. That's whether you're working or retired. Thing like, things like taxes, um, your normal utility expenses, groceries, uh, health insurance. These are things that will always be there. Add those up. How much is that going to cost you on a monthly basis? Now figure out the social side. I want to golf a couple of times a week. I want to take a trip once a quarter. I want to take the whole family on a big bang out vacation every year. Add those expenses up. People get tripped up here too. Well, I pay taxes twice a year on my, on my real estate taxes, or, you know, I have one annual insurance premium. Well, we call it monthetizing those expenses. If you pay them twice a year, multiply it by two and divide it by 12. Now you have a monthly expense for that semi-annual cost. So figure out how much money do you need coming into your bank account, into your checking account, to live the life that you want to live? Is it $5,000 a month? Is it $10,000 a month? Is it $20,000 a month? Start with the budget and figure out, hey, if I want to live happy, here's what I need coming into my bank account to make this work. Move on to step number three. You've said, yes, I'm mentally ready. I know how much I want to spend in retirement. The next step is, do I have that income coming in? Now you're getting into the financial planning side of this, right? So a lot of us will be entitled to some paychecks that don't come from our retirement savings. Things like a social security paycheck. Things like a pension, if your employer is going to give you one. You have some entitlement checks that will come to you at some point, more than likely. So if you came up with a number of $10,000 a month for your budget, and you're adding your entitlement paychecks, Social Security is going to get me $1,500, and a pension is going to get me $3,500. I know I'm going to have $5,000 a month coming in. I need ten. I am short or I have an income gap of about $5,000 a month. There's only a couple of ways you can produce that income gap, that extra paycheck that you need. Let me give them to you. You can work in retirement. Retirement means different things to different people. For, for some, it doesn't mean sitting on the porch and drinking lemonade and reading a book every day. For some, it means I'm going to retire from my career I've worked for 40 years and I'm gonna do something that I enjoy. That enjoyment factor might actually bring a paycheck in if you do it right. So if I need additional income, where can I get it from? Well, you can work or you could spend the money that you've saved for all these years. You've got 401ks or IRAs or brokerage accounts. You've got money in the bank. You might have a lump sum coming to you from your employer when you retire. You will likely, if you have a gap, have to take a withdrawal from your retirement portfolio, from your nest egg, that, that bucket at the end of the rainbow that you've accumulated. So figure out what's the gap. And in this example, let's say that we figured out we have a $5,000 per month gap. Now we move on to the final step. This is where when you started thinking about, ooh, do I have enough money saved? Now you can bring that into the equation. If we need $5,000 a month, that's $60,000 a year. Now think about what is the withdrawal rate going to be if I need to pull 5,000 a month from that retirement nest egg? 
is a million dollars enough. $60,000 a year coming out of a million dollar portfolio represents what we call a 6% withdrawal rate annually. Now you've probably heard about withdrawal rates. For years and years and years, they've talked about 4% being the safe withdrawal rate, the amount that you could pull comfortably from your nest egg and very likely never run out of money. Now I'm not going to say that there is a specific number, 4% or 5% or even 6%, that is what you have to achieve here to be successful. There's a lot of variables that go into the withdrawal rate and whether or not we can call that withdrawal rate sustainable for 20 or 30 or even 40 years in retirement. But knowing what your withdrawal rate is, is going to give us or you a very specific idea of whether or not you are financially ready to do this. We've talked about being mentally ready to do this, but financially ready is a different story. If your withdrawal rate is in that 4% range, you're probably in a pretty good position. We call it, we give you a red light, a yellow light, or a green light. You ask me if you can retire, I might say, hey, yellow light. That could mean that your withdrawal rate is above 4%, but it's in that five, six, 7% range. Well, we got a yellow light here. We gotta make sure we do some things. So if we say yellow light, that might mean that, hey, your withdrawal rate might be a little higher than 4% here but it could be in that five or six or even slightly higher than 6% withdrawal rate. And that could still be okay. Yellow light doesn't mean, hey, don't retire. It means, hey, we gotta be careful with this. We need to make sure that we have a plan. We need to make sure that we, we know that there are some risks that could come up or that you could face with your withdrawal rate. And we need to know a little bit about, can we change any of the budget figures, right? Are there things that you might be willing to cut out of your discretionary expense figure but still live happy in retirement? If you're way above six, seven, eight percent, nine percent, ten percent withdrawal rate, we might give you a red light. Red light means hold on, stop. If you retire, there could be some major things that could go wrong for you. It doesn't mean that you won't retire successfully, but you might want to think about some alternative plans. Working a few years longer might make a little bit more sense. Are you willing to cut your budget down? Would you still be happy if you did that? Green light is, hey, four, four and a half percent or below, you look really good on paper. The withdrawal rate that you have is going to be a sustainable withdrawal rate for a really long time. You're probably not going to have to take terribly too much risk with your investments. You could be conservative. You can kind of guide the ship. You have your, your hands on the steering wheel. So a green light is what you want. So there you go, we've talked about four things that you need to do before you make your retirement decision. And I might add, think about these four things and be prepared. If you're the type of person who is going to seek out a professional guide, you're gonna hire a financial advisor because you know that you wanna focus more on your life, worry a little less about your money, you're gonna go find that financial planner to work with you, do yourself a favor, Think about these four things and come into a first meeting with that person with all of this data. I can tell you, you come in and sit down with me or one of the members on our advisory team. If you don't have this prepared, we're sending you home and you're going to come back to a second meeting with it. So make sure you think about these things and you'll be all set and ready to have that conversation about retirement. So now you know if you're ready to retire. Hey, if you have questions about this topic or you'd like to see us cover something else, just drop it in the comments. Make sure you hit like on this video and subscribe for more content like this. It's time for me to pass the ball off to one of my other team members. We'll see you back here next time.